Nestled on the United States side of the border between California and Tijuana, you'll find Border Field State Park. This important wildlife habitat is comprised of sand dunes and salt marshes that give refuge to critically threatened and endangered species. We know that this used to be an extensive dune system with very high sand dunes in between the beach and, and the marsh itself. And those dunes obviously provide important habitats in and of themselves, but they also help protect the systems behind them. This park has faced a lot of challenges. Military installations and activities, cross-border pollution, and increasingly frequent storms and flooding have heavily impacted the coastal ecosystems of Borderfield State Park. Coastal Environments Incorporated, in partnership with the Borderfield State Park and the Tijuana River National Estuary Research Reserve, proposed to restore the coastal dune system along the southern end of the park. We thought that the dunes were still here, even if they are like extremely disturbed. But it showed that like okay, they still have like sediment supply and that um, keep them alive. And then like we came in here and I I noticed like all these sand ripples. That means that like we have the wind that moves the sand and sand supply that are gonna support the growth of the, the new dune. Make sure that okay if we stop uh, doing the project here, it, it, it's gonna work. They decided on a living shoreline approach. Living shorelines provide a natural alternative to hard shoreline stabilization methods such as riprap or bulkheads, and provide numerous benefits, including buffering our shorelines from waves and storms. The project was designed to evaluate proven, innovative methods for rebuilding dune topography and restoring native vegetation. The experimental design included three blocks, each containing three treated plots and one untreated control plot. While all three treated plots included planting with native seeds, two included the installation of wooden shims, one in a linear matrix and the other in 22 ellipses. Most critically, to reduce trampling, the entire experimental area was protected with symbolic fencing, which proved to be indispensable to limit and prevent anthropogenic pressure and to maintain an undisturbed dune system and habitat. To monitor changes over time, UAV, or drone surveys, were conducted biannually in addition to vegetation surveys. The results? The dune systems responded positively to the installation of wooden shims. All plots treated with shims have continued accumulating sand since their installation, even during the unusually high waves and severe rainstorms that occurred during the winter of 2020 and 2021. Here is when we started, right? And then thing is getting better. It shows us there's no much difference between the linear shims and the elliptic shims, but there was a big difference between sand volume when we had the shims and we don't have the shims. Accumulation of sand will continue to increase dune stability and height and reduce wave overwash and sand transport into the intertidal marsh habitats of the Tijuana estuary and preserve essential ecological wetland processes. These are complicated areas. There's a lot that we don't know about how to restore these systems. So how can we do our restoration projects in a way that we can ask some questions and answer them and then apply them to the next phase of restoration. In 2070 and 2080, sea level will accelerate uh, much more than it is now. So until 2050, I think these techniques will work, will work very well, provide the people protection of their geos and their assuring, and let other people take it ahead and, uh, and go further. Other similar beach habitats can utilize these proven low-cost methods to enhance their own shorelines and build resiliency, creating a more sustainable future for our coasts.